Okay, we want to talk about printers some more. The first thing we're going to start off with is how do you use printers from a command line? So let's go to our command line here. And um, let me clear the screen. Let me do an LS. And I've got a couple jobs up here, uh, or a couple files up here. One of these files is activity09. And I seem to have that in an ODT format, a PostScript format, and a, um, a PDF format. Um, basically, the way Linux printers work, well, most any printer is kind of designed so if you send a text file to the printer, the printer will print it. Um, so you can send text files um, like computer program source code to a printer and it will print it just as is. The other thing, so uh, for example, I could use the command LPR or LP depending on which syntax I like, but I use the LPR syntax. Uh, minus P and then name the printer. And as I recall, I've got a printer um, ML1740, and then I could send a text file. And I think uh, bash, .bash RC is a text file, so that should print just fine. And indeed, it does. Um, I kind of have to look up the other syntax uh, to use the LP command if uh, using man space LP. And I think what I would find is the syntax that would work with that would be LP space minus D space the name of my printer and the then all the files I want to print, um, which would be um, dot bash RC. And that would print. And if we take a look at it, both of these files, they do indeed print. And I get a printout that looks something like that. Um, However, if I want to do graphics and I want to do text that has fonts and whatnot, you know, I want more than just a text file to print. Um, and the, the system that has been in use for Unix for many years is most software, their job is to, when you say print, their job is fundamentally produce a postscript file. The magic is a postscript file which ends in dot p, p, dot .ps, or uh, if it's there's a little subversion of PostScript called encapsulated uh, PostScript, which would end in a suffix e, uh, dot .eps. Um, in any case, either one of those will print on almost any Unix machine. So basically, the idea is you produce software that can form a PostScript file, and then the printer will print that PostScript file. So I can print that by doing something like uh, LPR space minus P ML1740 space uh, activity 9.ps. And that should print. And indeed. You can hear the printer, and it will print. And once it prints, you'll get something that looks like this, with a nice bold print up at the top. And you know, if it had graphics, there'd be graphics in here. It could be a big uh, map or CAD file or whatever, because you can do all of that in PostScript. Now, a little digression on PostScript. PostScript is a unusual print format in that most print, most formats that we think of for as formats are just kind of, oh, like a GIF file or a JPEG file for images. They're kind of just the data in a nice compressed standard format or a TIFF file or a DXF file for, uh, uh, for CAD data. Um, but in the case of a PostScript file, the PostScript file is actually a programming language. And there are books written on PostScript and how to write this programming language. Although most people don't write the programming language. Instead, what they do is they have, um, um, they have a piece of software that writes the program for them. Um, but uh, since this is a programming language, just to, let's take a look at the 
uh, file, just a brief look. And it looks something like, like this here. And you'll see there's things up here. I think the first line is a comment statement. Um, and if you go through here, you'll find commands um, like show page that says print this page, print this page, um, R move, which is a move command, R line, which is a line command. And then in most of these PostScript files, you'll also find embedded in them huge images of, of um, you know, just, just image, things like this that are just image data. So, um, OK. Um, of course, that brings up the point. Is there some way to look at this file with, you know, like if I had a JPEG file, I could bring it into GIMP and I could display the file without printing it. Sometimes it is very handy to be able to display a PostScript file. And there is a command for that that is on a lot of systems. It's part of a big, huge package called GhostScript. And um, the command, the GhostScript command for showing a um, PostScript file is called GV. Whoop. Well, I don't know. GV space activity, and then the name of my file. Um, GV space activity 9.ps, and there it is there. And this will even display, you know, 1,000 page documents. So if you download a big PostScript file from the internet um, that's 100 pages long, and you don't want to um, um, print it, well, an alternative is just to read it on the screen using um, a GV, just like you would read a DXF file using um, ac um, Adobe Acrobat or XPDF. Or the truth is, GV will also read Adobe Acrobat files. Um, OK. Um, the other thing about the PostScript uh, about the print command, the LP command, is there must be a default printer someplace. And indeed, there is a default printer. If I do a print like a print command like this, and I put nothing in it, there is a way of defining a default printer. It happens to be my um, um, laser jet, which is up above my head here. And um, you can generally find out what the default printer is by printing a file, which is called slash etc slash print cap. And that file contains information about your printers. Um, and the first line, the first non-comment line of that file is your default printer. So this says that the ML1740 is our default printer. Um, it used to be you edited that command by hand with the old um, LPD system. But now CUPS handles all of this. But CUPS, does pre um, CUPS creates a file here which has all that information in it. And the first, as I say, the first non um, um, the first non-comment line is your default printer. OK. Now, if you happen to be using this from um, a program like LibreOffice, hope this comes up, but we'll see. Then, of course, you get your menus and everything, and it looks just like, well, it's, let's suppose we want to print this file. Um, there's a print button down here. It comes up, and it displays the various printers that you can print to. You choose whatever printer you want. The first one that comes up is the default printer. And you hit the print button, and it prints the file. Um, most of the um, Linux programs also have an option buried in them someplace to print your file, to print the thing as a file. 
And if I go through and I print that as a file, that will make up a PostScript file for me. And I can store that and don't have to recreate it again if I should want to store my print file. OK. Let's get out of LibreOffice. And um, let's talk a little more about our print system. Um, the one thing about print systems is it is a queuing system. So we have to be able to manage our queues, right? And managing our queues means that we will want to be able to turn a queue on, turn a queue off, uh, maybe turn it on and off in a couple ways. And there are commands for that. And they are described in the first section of the book under um, um, printer administration. But the main, uh, the, one of the things to remember is you can make your printers accept or reject printouts. Um, or you can enable or disable a printer. And those are two different things. As an example, let's look at my printers here, LPSTAT minus A. And I've got basically um, my printer. Uh, red is rejecting jobs. My printer ML1740 is accepting jobs. Um, let me um, send a printout to red and see what happens. Let's go back over here. Let's send this printout to red. OK, what happens there is it just simply rejects my printout. It comes back and it says, that printer's gone. It's history. Don't ever send a printout to this job again. If I then try to list all the printouts in the print queue, I think the command to do this would be LPQ minus, probably need a minus P red. I'm not sure. Maybe just LPQ. Um, and it doesn't list anything because there's nothing in the print queue. Now, let me go back here, because I need to be root to do this. And let me take the ML1740 printout, and let me make it, um, instead of making it reject, if I wanted to make it reject printouts, I would do this command, 1740. And then if I wanted to make it accept printouts again, I would have to type except ML1740. And I'm sorry, the book uses the words cups reject and cups accept. Um, and that is correct. Um, just simply typing accept and reject also works, because that's the way it worked before we had the cup system. So they make those commands work as well. Um, in, in any case. And now, suppose I want to make it so it disables the printer. So I would disable a printer like if I'm changing paper or something. I would then type, and I'll type cups disable, um, ML1740. OK, let's send a printout to that printer. Whoops, wrong screen. Sorry about that. Let's, and that's the default printer. So if I just send that, it should go there. OK? I don't hear anything. That's because I made the printer, um, um, I, I told the printer not to accept jobs. So it's, um, or I disabled the printer. So it, it's, it's not accepting jobs. So I, I don't know what's happening here. However, suppose I go down here, let's clear screen, and I type LPQ, LPQ, minus um, PML1740. OK, there's a lot of printouts in my queue. I've got lots and lots of printouts. And I can start managing these printouts. Suppose I wanted to kill a couple of those printouts. Well, I'll do that after the break. 
So bye-bye for the moment.